Hi everyone, I'm Journal Page, and I'm going to be using uh, the texture I've done with the silicone trivet. I've showed you in the last video how to work with silicone molds, and it doesn't have to be <laughs> a silicone mold, it can be anything silicone. And this is what I've got. This was one of my experiments. What I'm going to do now is first I'm going to glue this to my page, and that's one of the things that is good that I've put a paper on the back. It's just easier to work with than without it. And also, if I don't like a part of the mold that I have, I can either cut it or just tear it. So I'm just gluing it down here. And here is what I'm talking about. If I don't like some part, I can just rip it off and it doesn't affect the rest of the texture. So, just putting down some white glue, like so, and I'm gluing it to my page. Next. Okay, so we've got the texture on the page. Now I'm going to go and coat everything with gesso. Why? Because it's a good primer and it will give everything the same consistency. And also because it was just an experiment. I've done it on my trivet while it had some leftover paint. So it, it picked up also the paint. And now it's clean. Win-win. <laughs> so just taking some brush and i'm taking gesso with a little bit of water my gesso is quite thick right now so i want to so it will go into all the nooks and crannies of my texture and now i'm just going to go over everything and i don't want it to clog the details of the texture i just want to uh, go over it and i don't mind if the green that i have here is still showing and i'm also going over the whole page with the gesso just so everything will have the same consistency when i'm going to apply a paint I'm going real quick about it, doesn't need anything special. I have bits of a modeling paste, little uh, stuff that broke away from the texture, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time when I'm uh, using something like this, I will also uh, create texture that will go in between, even if it's just crumpled tissue paper. But right now I'm more, uh, I want to uh, leave this area texture free. I'm going to stamp or stencil uh, in this area. So I'm just going to leave it as is and not add more texture. I will go for more like <laughs> a visualized, visual texture than any other stuff. And I really need some more gesso just to cover the beehive pattern. And a little bit more water. Okay, so this needs to dry completely before I apply paint. Now you can go about it in several ways. You can use watercolors, acrylics, sprays, whatever you like. I'm going to use, well for start acrylics, we'll see as we go along. I'm not sure yet 
it's not completely planned so we'll see okay I think everything <laughs> got covered and I'll be back when it's dry and I'm back it mostly dry I, and I'm going to start with the paint I've got all kinds of colors here I've got luscious lemon I've got a yellow golden brown a soft suede and antique gold whatever just picked all kinds of um, <clears throat> colors that I thought would work and I've got some white here just uh, so I can do some variation in the color and first I'm starting with this yellow and I, I'm more concerned uh, at first at covering the texture I wanted to get in before I do anything else so I'm pushing the brush inside now that I'm doing it I'm thinking that maybe I should have gone with a darker color but I'll just keep on with this and we'll see maybe I'll, if I don't like it I'll fix it later so just pushing the paint into all this texture well it seems like I will need more paint okay just pushing it in so I will have complete coverage don't have to be gentle Okay, so I'm going to keep at it and I'll be back. Okay, so my texture is covered and I started to dip into the next yellow and doing this and I didn't like it and I don't like the brush stroke so I'm taking now a sponge and dipping into it and I'm going to play with the colors. I really want them to uh, blend I want variation in the color so I'm moving between the colors and dipping each time to a different one. I want to keep the darker colors to the edges of my page otherwise I really don't care. I'm also applying a little bit when I have less of it on my sponge I'm also adding it to the page but most of it is going to be at the edges <clears throat> so I'm now doing the edges going all on top of my texture also we'll see how everything comes along I'm just playing with the colors as I said I think I need more of the lighter yellow. I'm using just a regular uh, sponge, synthetic one, nothing to it. I'm dipping into the white to have variation in the color and so it won't look completely flat. I'm also thinking of doing the middle lighter than the other parts otherwise I'm just playing with the colors and if I don't like an area I can always go back and either lighten or darken it 
we can always do another layer okay let's see continuing with the darker color to the edges well I seems like I don't like this brown so I'm taking this one okay more dark color to the edges okay and now I want lighter color on the inside in several places I want more white the paint is still wet so it blends nicely so just working it until you like what you see okay little bit on my texture yeah okay i like it <laughs> this is it so i'm going to let this dry and i'm thinking of applying some i don't know maybe sprays or some drippage so it will pick up the texture better and add more color to my page and 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 i'm thinking if stamping and, and stenciling before the drippage or after i will figure it out Right now, I just need for this to dry. I'll be back. Okay, so background's finally <laughs> dry. So I've got archival ink coffee and I'm thinking of stenciling and I want this swirly uh, thing going on here. I just want to mask part of this uh, so it won't get in the way let's see just putting it like this very quickly and let's see yeah I think something like this I'm taking this makeup brush with this archival ink ink pad and going like this I hope it will add interest to the background without overwhelming the page that's why i'm using this with the brush it gives you a softer uh, imprint instead of stenciling with an acrylic paint let's see yes that's what i was going for so win Just a little bit more here. Let's see. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So now I want more of it. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe if I'll flip it over just so it won't look exactly the same. And again just doing the same thing I need to hold it okay I'm putting pressure but still it 
it's uh, turning out soft and not overwhelming. Yeah, and 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 how do I go about it? Yeah. Now I'm doing it here, same thing. I also got some stamps uh, out, some beehive pattern and some uh, text. We'll see. Okay, I like it. So I've got th this beehive pattern and just gently don't need it to be too much present on this page just a hint of it and now I'm going for the text and I really need some I don't know I feel like I need some orange color here and I think I only have orange in this Distress uh, Ink Spiced Marmalade. Now I'm doing it quite random and it's hardly noticeable but it's here just adding to the details in the background as I said visual texture okay so this is done I really 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 like this background and now for my focal image let's see uh, where did I put it in all this mess I've got one B I've got two B's and I swear I had another one I'm gonna uh, find it uh, because I want another bee here and I'm going to glue this down and then I'll come back I'm back I've got my three bees I glue them just with a glue stick it's a uh, thin paper I printed them uh, from a website just d done some a uh, bumblebee free printable on Pinterest and many many results so you can do this as well so I've printed them and fussy cut them and here they are the only thing I want to add now is just a little bit more color to this texture and I'm going to use this spiced marmalade and going to go over just to add a little bit more orangey color I don't know if you can see it and I think just one more thing I've got some copper acrylic paint and I'm going to take a hard bristle brush and it's a good thing it's a quite heavy duty I'm a almost clean almost cleaning my brush and I'm just going over the texture you probably can't see the sheen of the metallic paint that's the problem with all kinds of shiny and glittery stuff you can hardly see it on the video but it's there okay so I've put a little bit more than I wanted to here so I'm just going to wipe it off just use the baby wipe I'm just dry brushing this texture and putting a little bit more in several places but basically just picking up a little bit of the detail and yep yeah, this is it that's my page so I hope you liked it I hope you'll try doing all kinds of stuff with the um, silicone uh, molds that I've showed you and how to use it on your a uh, 
craft projects, mixed media project, whatever. So thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments down below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.